Hello, this is Dr. Mark Libwell. I'm the Chairman of Dermatology at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai in New York. I will be discussing efficacy of guselkumab within specific body regions in patients with moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. Results from the Phase 3 Voyage 1 study presented by Dr. Blauvelt and colleagues at the American Academy of Dermatology annual meeting that took place in Orlando from March 3rd to March 7th, 2017. To summarize this poster, treatment with guselkumab for one year is efficacious in treating regional disease of the scalp, nails, hands, and or feet in patients with moderate to severe psoriasis. Treatment response to guselkumab was significantly better than with the adalimumab. The study is important because psoriasis involve, involves the scalp, nails, hands, and or feet commonly. Uh, it is troubling to patients and particularly difficult to treat. Guselkumab may be a safe and effective option for these patients. And here's how the study was designed. Voyage 1 was a phase 3 randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled, multi-center, active comparator study in patients with moderate to severe plaque psoriasis. Patients were randomized 1 to 2 to 2 to receive either placebo at week 0, 4, and 12, followed by crossover to guselkumab, 100 milligrams, at week 16 and 20, and then every eight weeks through week 44. The patients received guselkumab 100 milligrams at week zero and four, and then every eight weeks through week 44. And in the third arm, patients were treated with adalimumab 80 milligrams at week zero, 40 milligrams at week one, and then 40 milligrams every two weeks through week 47. The key findings were as follows. 837 patients with a mean duration of psoriasis of 17.5 years were randomized. 20.9% had been treated with a biologic previously. 78.1% had moderate to severe scalp disease. 55.8% had moderate to severe fingernail disease. And 58% had moderate to severe hands and or foot disease. The proportion of patients who achieved a score of absence of disease or very mild disease and more than a two grade improvement in the scalp specific investigators global assessment score from baseline at week 16 was 83.4% for guselkumab, 70.3% for adalimumab, and 14.5% for placebo. Significantly more patients treated with guselkumab than adalimumab achieved the same endpoint at weeks 24 and 48. At week 48, for example, 78.3% of patients treated with guselkumab and 60.5% of patients treated with adalimumab achieved a score of absence of disease or very mild disease and more than a two-grade improvement in the scalp-specific investigative global assessment score. The proportion of patients who achieved a fingernail physician's global assessment score of clear or minimal from baseline at week 16 was 39.1% for guselkumab, 50.9% for adalimumab, and 15.9% for placebo. A similar proportion of patients treated with guselkumab as adalimumab achieved this endpoint at week 24. However, at week 48, significantly more patients treated with guselkumab than adalimumab achieved a, a fingernail PGA score of clear or minimal, 74.7% .7 with guselkumab versus 61.8% with adalimumab. The mean percent improvement from baseline and the nail psoriasis severity index at week 16 was significantly greater with guselkumab and adalimumab than with placebo. There was no difference between guselkumab and adalimumab at weeks 24 or 48. The proportion of patients who achieved a score of clear or almost clear and more than a two grade improvement in the hands and or feet PGA from baseline at week 16 was 73.3% for guselkumab, 55.8% for adalimumab, and 14.0% for placebo. 24 and 48, significantly more patients treated with guselkumab than adalimumab achieved the same endpoint. At week 48, 73.9% of guselkumab patients and 74.5% of adalimumab patients experienced an adverse event. Nasopharyngitis was the most common, occurring in 25.2% of guselkumab patients and 22.2% of adalimumab patients. 4.9% of guselkumab patients and 4.5% of adalimumab patients experienced serious adverse events. An infection requiring antibiotic treatment 
occurred in 16.4% of bucelcumab and 18.0% of adalimumab patients.